Go Inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Gary Harris. Here we go on Tider Insider TV with football recruiting. Alabama landed its 14th verbal commitment recently for the class of 2011. Vinny Sinceri announced his intentions to roll with the Tide last Friday. He won't have to go far to campus either. Sinceri is about to start his senior season at Northridge High School under head coach Mike Smith right here in Tuscaloosa. If his last name sounds familiar, it should. His dad is an assistant coach at uh, University of Alabama for defense. Sal Sinceri will have much more on Vinny and other Alabama prospects later in our recruiting segment. But first, the Alabama baseball team had a dramatic comeback in the ninth inning yesterday at Clemson and was one swing away from going to Omaha. But the ninth inning rally came up just short. We'll look back at their season and look ahead to the program's future. And good evening, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Tider Insider TV presented by Buffalo Rock alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris, and Rodney, out of your call, me said she loved to hear me pop the top. Only you. So I told her I'd do it tonight. Dr. Pepper is the drink of choice tonight from Buffalo Rock. I like that, too, because it's nice mm -hmm. and cold and ready to be hitting the old throat here in just a moment. Truth be known, there's really only one team that's going to be happy at the end of a season, and that's the one that wins the national championship. And while the Tide baseball team is disappointed today, there's still so much to be proud of about the season. Alabama was very close to going back to Omaha for the first time since 1999 after trailing 8-1 to one at the beginning of the ninth inning. And then with two outs, and it still being 8-1, to one, the Tide rallied, made it 8-6, to six, had runners on second and third. The tie runs, the winning run at the plate in the form of Jake Smith, who had already hit two home runs in the Super Regional. And he just missed that pitch. Lamb hung it just a little bit. He got underneath it. Had he connected with it, Alabama would have won 9-8. to eight. But still, a great, great run for the Crimson Tide. And yesterday's game, Rodney, I think, epitomized this squad and what they were able to do this season. After the fast start, the midseason slump, toward the end of the year, they finished every game, they finished every pitch, every out, and they didn't quit and almost – made the most amazing comeback in Alabama baseball history yesterday. Well, I think it's safe to say, Gary, that Mitch Gaspard certainly got the most out of this baseball team, probably overachieved, quite honestly. And, you know, when you look at Clemson, you could see that, you know, Clemson was a very, very good, very talented baseball team, probably more talented than Alabama, quite honestly. And the Alabama coaching staff, Coach Bunn, Coach Gaspard, we've talked about them, what they've done. The players did an outstanding job and, you know, showed a lot of heart getting as far as they did. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And this isn't a knock at Alabama. It's a, it's a credit to Clemson. Jack Leggett, one of the great coaches in the country, that program's established. They're going back to Omaha. One through nine, that lineup was fearsome. I mean, every guy that stood up there at the plate looked like Mm -hmm. He could take it out of the out of the yard, and, re and really they could. Alabama had a nice team, but they had to maximize their potential. Pitching, defense, clutch base hits. They weren't a real powerful team. They hit a few more home runs in the postseason on average than they did during the regular season. But as you said, credit Coach Gaspard. I didn't think they had a prayer midseason. I didn't even think this team would make it to the postseason. But they maximized their potential, became a dangerous ball club, and uh, really deserve a big pat on the back and congratulations. And plus, Rodney, even though they don't make it to Omaha, this builds a lot of excitement with the fan base for next season going forward as Coach Gaspar yeah, tries to put I this think, program uh, back on top. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Gary. I think it builds a lot of confidence as well. Again, that first year you see that the transition year, sometimes it's the most difficult time, and they peaked at the right time, started to come around. And, again, we talked about Mitch Gaspard, you know, his coaching uh, ability in terms of what he did at Northwestern State before he came here. He has shown that he's done an outstanding job in the past. And, again, in this first year, Gary, when things appeared like they were falling apart there at midseason, he held the team together. They kind of started to develop and mesh together as the season went along there at the end, got hot at the right time. The pitching came around. I think that's something that, you know, what Coach Bunn did with that pitching staff down the stretch and what they did once they got into the, the tournaments, the SEC tournament, then the regionals and all that. I mean, that was an incredible job. Absolutely. More Bama baseball now. Our John Huddleston was in Clemson along with our photographer Todd Hoyer for all three games over the weekend. We were the only television station to be there at the regional the entire time. And he has more on it. Monday's dramatic finish, the season as a whole, and the future. The Alabama baseball team was literally one swing away from going to Omaha. After trailing 8-1 to one at the beginning of the ninth, Bama began a rally. 
Brett Booth's two-run homer, a bases-loaded walk, and a Clemson fielding error brought Bama within two runs and put the winning run at the plate. To put yourself back in position to win the game in the ninth inning, I think just speaks volumes uh, of the character you know, of, of our team. But with two men on, Jake Smith flew out to left, thus ending Bama's comeback and their season. Look up, and there's two or three guys on, another good hit, another big hit, and then the air, and then I honestly thought I was going to be the hero there. You know, he was the guy we wanted up in that spot, and I thought he put a pretty good swing on it. Obviously, the tide leaves here with a sense of disappointment, a sense of what could have been. But there's a lot that the squad should be proud of. Number one on that list is their attitude. We believed all the way up until the last pitch that we were going to win the game. And I mean, just, I've just never been a part of a, a team like that. You know, I was proud of this team, proud of the coaches sticking with us. Um, you know, it's just, it's just been a fun ride. We just try to, you know, ride that wave out. Fortunately, we didn't get to our, uh, our, our goal. And even though the ultimate result wasn't what he wanted, Coach Gaspart says he wouldn't have changed a thing about this squad. I mean, 24 years of coaching as an assistant and a head coach, uh, uh, on a personal note, never been more proud of a team. And it's the subtle changes in attitude and mentality that the coach says will pay off for this program down the road. In Clemson, South Carolina, John Huddleston, TITV. Thank you, John. And uh, Rodney, the program, as we've already alluded to under Mitch Gaspart, looks like it's in good hands. Can they build on this? I know recruiting's the key, but but moving forward now, can can they follow this up next year and be right back in this same position when opportunity comes? Well, well, first of all, I think you know when you look at Mitch Gaspard, his first year, we've talked about that. I think he's laid the foundation now. There's no question about Mitch Gaspard's recruiting ability, Gary. He is a tremendous recruiter. Not only is he a great recruiter, though, he's probably one of the best talent evaluators there is you know, in the country. And I think, you know, obviously that's what it takes. You have to get the players here and, and then develop them. And I think he does a great job in every area. Well, Rodney, one thing that's going to have to happen in the, in the fairly near future, the time, you know, maybe not right away, there's a great players' lounge they built underneath the stadium. But as far as the ballpark right. for the fan experience, you know, there's no doubt Sewell Thomas needs some touch-ups. You know, it's, it's a ballpark that has fallen behind. Aesthetically, as far as the Southeastern Conference is concerned, the uh, seating down the left and right field lines, not the greatest sight lines. So at some point in time, that's something they're going to have to address if they want this program to be one of the premier ones in college baseball. All right, still to come on TITV, Rodney will be uh, up with his recruiting update. He's got some interesting stories on some interesting prospects. But up next, expansion is now the name of the game in college football these days. But what does Nick Saban think about it? We'll hear from the coach. Also, we'll be getting your phone calls and your emails. 205-348-9882 is the number, or you can email us, TITV at WVUATV.com. Stay tuned. You're watching the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, the one, the only, Tider Insider TV, presented by Buffalo Rock.